Before we start to look at our new poem, we're just going to go back to She Walks in Beauty and practice our recall of our keywords. Cloudless, shade, innocent. Now you're on to the next step. Let's see if you can use the keywords to trigger the whole quote. Once you've done that and are good at it, see if you can use the keywords first of all to trigger the quote and then to trigger the story of the whole poem. Well done, now you're ready to move on to the next poem. Here's some things to think about before we start to read the poem. First of all, what would you think about a building that had no flat surfaces or straight lines in it at all? Would you like to live in a building that looked like the one in the image below? Use the link on this slide to listen to the poem read by the poet Imtiaz Darka herself. Listen to the poem at least twice. I always find I need to hear a poem a number of times and to read it carefully before I start to really understand what it's about. Now we're going to write for 10 minutes about the poem. Whenever we write about a poem, we always start by telling the story. What's the poem about? We think about the who, when, what and where and we explain the story. There are some notes on the next slide to help you with this and you can use information that you've already discovered on previous slides. But remember at this point we're only explaining the story of the poem. Now, having explained the story of the poem, we're going to go back to the poem as a whole and find three important things that we're going to focus on. We'll need three quotes to support what we're saying and to help retell that story in greater detail. We're going to think about how Darker describes the way poor people live in India. In stanza one, she begins by describing the slums in Mumbai and how people use old discarded materials to create a space to live. She explains that they look crooked and unsafe and believes it's a miracle that they don't collapse. Stanza two is squashed in between two larger stanzas. Now this tiny stanza shows just what it's like to be squashed in a tiny living space in between lots of other people. Stanza three follows this tiny stanza with an image of eggs. She uses these eggs to emphasise how fragile these structures are. But even so, they're all, even though they're all squashed together, light still manages to gather inside these spaces. And on the last line, Darker shows that these people still have faith and still have hope for the future. These are the three quotes that I've selected. I've selected them because I feel they tell an important part of the story of the poem. For each quote, I've picked out a key word. That key word's really important because it'll trigger the whole quote in my mind. For example, the word flat will trigger the quote, nothing is flat or parallel. I'll practice remembering the keyword and I'll practice remembering the whole quote. Eventually, that whole quote and that key word will trigger the story of the poem in my mind and help me remember everything that happens in the poem Living Space. 
look at the detail on this slide. Look at the red comments that explain why this quote is important to me. Once you've done that and thought about it, go back to the previous slide, practice your recall, use the trigger words, cover the quote, see if you can remember the quote, see if you can remember why it's important to the poem as a whole. Now we've selected our quotes, it's time to start writing about the poem again. We're going to develop paragraphs using our quotes as evidence to explain the story. And the next three slides will walk you carefully through this process. It's now time to conclude our writing on the poem. We need to think about the why of the poem. And in order to do this, we need to ask ourselves three questions. First of all, why did the poet write this poem? What's the poet telling us about the poor? And what does the poet want us to learn about poverty and the way poor people live? On the next slide, there are some hints to help you with this section. Here are some ideas for your conclusion. Remember, it doesn't have to be long. It should only take you about five minutes. You just need to sum up what we learn from reading this poem. Now, read through your response to this poem. If you have a green pen, use it now. Read carefully, slowly, and correct and improve as you go. Have another go at your recall practice. Use the keywords to trigger the quotes, and use the quotes to trigger the story of the poem. Well done. You've now completed your response to the poem Living Space by Imtiaz Darker. Keep this response ready for next year and whenever you've got a free moment, practice your recall of the three key words and see if you can remember the quotes and then of course, see if you can remember the story of the poem. <laughs>